So, Andre, welcome back. Uh, just sum up the, the time off for you. I mean, it's I know after the last fight, uh, maybe not the reaction you wanted, but some ups and downs. What has it been like for you? Um, growth. <coughs> you know, if, if I can take anything from that experience, it's growth. Um, you know, I I overcame that that part of my life, that part of my career. Obviously, you know, I I I should have did something. I didn't do it. I got a lot of backlash for it. Whatever, growth, man. Yeah, uh, like what kind of growth exactly? Like, do you feel like you, is it a mental growth, a physical growth? How you know, would you sum it up? Last year was my first year in the UFC, and I fought four times, two fights on late notice. I got, I signed a second contract in one year. I got a <laughs> bonus. I was on the main card twice. I fought in another country. So I did a lot of things that a lot of guys did in five years, in one year. You know what I mean? So. My focus was all over the place too. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm blowing up a little bit, and I, I was kind of focusing on the. I was focused on fighting, but I was also focused on the other unimportant things that comes along with fighting. Mm -hmm. And I was putting too much energy into that. You know, fight week, the embedded, the cameras, and I was putting too much energy in that. You know, especially fighting a show, showman like uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley. You know, he knows how to put on a show. People love him, so I was trying to compete with that man and. Uh, I just I just grew from that and I learned that I just need to focus on myself and be myself and focus on winning fights because at the end of the day it's family and fighting man that's my lifestyle and that's what's gonna get me to where I need to be. One of the things you said coming into this is you got the fire back it's gonna be the old Andre what kind of rekindled that? Going back home to train um, what I did was I split four weeks I spent four weeks down in Florida like I usually do with my team down in Hard Knocks 365, great training partners, some of the best coaches in the world. But then I wanted to um, split my camp and go back home to my old coaches, my, you know, uh, my old MMA coach Pete, my old boxing coach Dave, my coach from day one, my father, you know, because they know me and, and they know me mentally and they know me physically. So it wasn't like I was jumping into something new. I was going into something that was winning me fights that got me into the UFC. So. That really brought my fire back. Just, just um, having building a team around Andre Sukumta rather than just being a teammate or a part of a team. Now I'm the boss, and I control my training, and I, and you know everybody's revolved around me. Not to dwell on the past too much, but after the O'Malley fight, you kind of saw him sign off on Twitter one last week. You said, "Hey, media, it takes two people to put on fight of the night." Was there anything in particular that kind of triggered that? Absolutely. You know, um, everybody's talking about oh. You know, obviously they're making fun of me and stuff like that. Being <laughs> internet bullies, you know what I'm saying? And um, they were just like, you know, I should have took him down. Why did I take him down? All I had to do was stand up, call me the dumbest fighter in the UFC. Um, but if you look at the fight, and we got fight of the night, like, can you not respect my heart? I got rocked the first round. You know what I'm saying? I went into that fight. People don't know. I went into that fight with like a nearly torn MCL. You know, half of my, more than half of my camp was physical therapy, but only I know that, you know, so it takes two people to get fight of the night, you know. Um, if I wasn't tough, if I, if I didn't fight back, if I didn't try to win the fight, we wouldn't have got fight of the night, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's all I meant by it. Everybody's like, oh, you know, this, that, this, that, praising Sean O'Malley, but hey, you need to praise me too, because I'm a warrior and I don't quit, no matter what. If I'm getting my ass beat, I'm going to keep on fighting until you put me to sleep. Given the injury, do you regret taking it at this point? Or? Nope, not at all. Because I was broke and I needed to do do it. I have a family to provide for. It was a big opportunity, a big jump in my career, and I saw an opportunity and I took it. And I, God rewarded me with it with a fight of the night. I don't want to dwell on the past any longer, but one last one on that. Um, O'Malley in hot water with Fusada. Do you have any comment on that? You know what? I'm a classy guy. I have no comment on that. Um, but all I got to say is, um, I know he's making more bread than me. He's got he's got like three hundred something thousand followers. Um, he's probably got a lot of sponsors. So if I can have a nutritionist and take the right stuff, then there's no reason that he doesn't have one. I doubt that he doesn't have one. I'm sure he has people on his team telling him what to take, telling him what not to take, trainers, nutritionists, doctors. If I have it, he has to have it. That's all I'm saying. So you were preparing for Gavin Tucker coming into this one, and obviously he's not on the card now. You're facing Martinez. What did the change of opponent do for you as far as preparation? Nothing. 
I kept it the same as I was going to fight Tucker. They're both southpaws. The only difference is, is this kid's first time in the octagon and he's fighting me, a one in three UFC fighter. That could be deceiving, but I'm going to go out and show the world that, you know, I'm going to be a really big problem at 135 and I still got potential. Is this, a, you, uh, you talked about the last one, you know, focusing too much on the embedded and all that stuff going on. Is this kind of like the perfect situation for you, a smaller town, uh, not a ton of media here, like you can just kind of focus on yourself and fly under the radar and just be, you know, on point with the fight? I love it. I love fighting in small towns like this. Um, and, you know, the energy is crazy because um, at the, something like the UFC come to a small town like Moncton, Canada, everybody is looking forward to it for months. So you know that place is going to be sold out. So I'm going to get some Canadian fans Saturday night, that's for sure. And what are your thoughts on the main event? How do you see Volkan Ozdemir versus Anthony Smith going down? I see no time, man. He's got to get out of the, he's got to get out of the cage, so he's going to give Anthony Smith no time. It was mentioned, I mean, late replacement with Jonathan Martinez coming in. We haven't seen him fight in a little over a year. What do you know about your opponent? I mean, he's, he's here now. So obviously the UFC sees something in him. I'm never going to sleep on somebody, you know. But all I know is going to sleep the first round, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't care who it is, whether it's your first fight in the UFC, whether it's your second, third. I'm here for business, man, and I had a great training camp. And that fire is back, baby. Look at my eyes. That fire is back. Where did you spend time for the training camps? Did you split time between two? Yes, so what we do in New England MMA is, you know, all the best fighters that have made it to the UFC, Bellator, the big shows, and even the guys that are, are coming up, we, we all come together and we all train together, you know? So you had to, we used to drive like hour there, hour there for jujitsu, boxing. Now we all just meet at like one place, maybe twice a week. And those places were um, um, Lausanne MMA and where I did most of my camp at Triforce MMA, you know, and I did my Moy Lao with my father there too. So um, basically it was Lausanne MMA and Triforce MMA. And uh, Dion Track and Winsaka Rhode Island. What's it like, you said you were doing it with your father, what's it like training with him? It's amazing, man, you know. Um, the reason I came back is because, you know, I come back every time around four times. I go back home to Rhode Island, you know, to go visit, my whole family's there, maybe four times a year, and I always, of course, try to get some training in with my father. And what I know is that he, he's grown a lot, you know, with, with the game. He's developed a lot, developed a lot of new tricks, and, and he's still got the same, same, of the, some same of the old ones. And what I realize as I'm getting older is, you know, I might have all these coaches. I might pay this person. I might pay that person. But at the end of the day, if my father's my coach, no one's going to care more about me winning than my father. What I hear from a lot of fighters who train with their dads is, dad always, he always knows when I'm slacking. He always knows when I'm trying to cut corners. Do you have that with your dad? Yeah, he's always pushed me to the max, but um, he never has to worry about that because um, he could vouch for it because I work hard. He, even when I'm tired, he never has to tell me to push harder because he knows that I'm always pushing hard in training, you know. And um, us bumping heads, that was in the beginning of my career. I was like 21, 22. I'm 30 now. We, we, didn't, we didn't butt heads once this camp.